You know who it is. It's your man, Whore Flick, Big Mitch from Super 6. And I'm bringing all three O's and we kicking in doors with one-on-ones because we Vegas sons, the Meadows. It's the Chronicles. You already know what it is. Sideways slang with it. Bolo Yang with it. Y'all can't hang with it. On them things with it. You know what it is. Quit it. <clears throat> Welcome to Vegas Chronicles, man, with your man, Hubba Dub, Big Mitch from Super 6. Um, <clears throat> uh, I try to answer questions, you know, before I start. Thanks to everybody that's uh, support my little small platform, man. I I just do what I do, man. You know, I'm not, I'm, you know, the accolades I get, I get them from God, for real. So what I bring y'all, man, it's just a blessing to be breathing, to bring it to you. You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> I try to answer questions when people ask me, you know, uh, and a person asked me what, when did it, uh, like Vegas really start, you know, change, you know, when did I see the change in Vegas, you know, uh, like when did it get from bad to worse? And I would say, uh, my experience, uh, I would say, um, <clears throat> now, you know, back like pre, like 85, you know, the crack epidemic hit Vegas, just like, you know, California. Let's begin with that, you know, because before the crack ep epidemic really hit Vegas, man, you know, you had gang banging, but it was more or less fisticuffs. You very, you very seldom had a killing, you know what I mean? And out here, you know, people, you know, I mean, it was fights. You had gang fights. You know what I mean? You know, GQs versus the Parus or the War Babies versus the Parus, the Gersons versus the Parus. You know, this before the West Coast Bloods came out. There was West Coast Crips, you know, um, the PBs versus the Gersons. The, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it just was, you know, you just had different gangs. You know, you had the OGs, you had the UCCs, the BTDs, you know, you had the hood, Hollywood, you know, you had just gangs and they fought, you know, but when the crack epidemic hit, things started to change. But see, <clears throat> you know, I would say this here, you know, um, it, everything went bad. See, when L got killed, L got killed in 86, Okay. It was a lot of uh, gang banging when L got killed, okay? But, you know, it was certain gangs that was not around. And it was certain gangs that was coming into existence like Donna Street and all that. But it was a lot of gangs that didn't exist when L got killed. But I'm going to tell you something. I think things really went bad in 1988. In 1988, one of the most potent, powerful things, tools, instruments that we have in existence is music. And, you know, it was a time when, you know, like, say for instance, when, like, when we was game banging and we was fighting, we was, you know, drinking Brass Monkey, doing a Brass Monkey, listening to the Beastie Boys, Sir Mix-a-Lot, my posse's on Broadway, you know, Square Dance, Rap, LL Cool J, Run DMC, UB, Ellen, and all that old stuff. You know what I mean? But when that boy, when, 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 and it's two things that, that, that took place in 1988 that changed the landscape. And it, it changed, it changed the thinking. And people don't understand that. It did because it brought with it a new, not just a way of thinking, it brought a new way of living, a, a new way of, uh, of wearing your clothes. And it was when colors came out. Okay, that's first. Now, one thing about music, the movie Colors came out, and then Ice-T came out with the song Colors. One thing about people that the powers that be use to control the masses is called mass seduction. And Ice-T used that song, that song right there, Colors. Woke up gang banging in a way, not just in California, but even out here. It woke it up in a way that was never seen before. And then not just that. See, in 1988, another guy came out, see, and his name was Eazy-E. See, 
you heard that I don't drink brass monkey, like to get funky nickname Easy E Yo Eight Ball Junkie. See that hit? Easy E, rockin' non stop on the radio with the funky fresh hip hop. See that new sound? What is that? And then you know, we always, we, we was already used to Ice T, squeeze the trigger, six in the morning. We had two short, but we never heard nothing like Easy E. And that came along with colors. So the gang banging thing, you know, we was rocking Kangos because we was we was in that LL moment. You know, the sweatsuits, the ballys, the shell toads. All of a sudden that switched and we started wearing Lokes, Raiders hats, Pendleton's, Flannels, Dickies, Levi's, Corduroy House shoes, Chuck Taylor's. You know, we start dressing different. Everything started changing. And we stopped with the fisticuffs. And we started doing like Easy E said. He shot, pa, pa, na, shot, pa, As you can see, I cold smoked his ass. Because I'm a gangster having fun. Never leave the pad without packing the gun. Hitting hard as fuck, I make you act. What was it? Boy, you should have known by now. Easy does it. See that, that music. That got into our psychic. And you notice how he say he shot, pa pa, not shot, pa. See, that's what we start doing. Pa pa, we start doing that. We stop fighting. See, everybody was make the music with your mouthpiece and doing all that old stuff. See, we was getting down back then. But when that Easy E came out, and then N.W.A. came out with him. That changed the whole landscape and we start we start being we start we start killing each other. So in 1988 is when it went bad in Vegas. Music has a profound effect on people. That's why when you go to church, when you go to church, especially black churches, they be rocking up in there. Because we really hurt. Them. And it's just like during the civil rights movement in our darkest days over here. When we were being persecuted, we, we, we didn't have nothing. We went to church when we were being hung. We went to church when we were being tarred. We went to church when they made it a ritual to barbecue us over there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We went to church and we sang our hearts out because we didn't have nothing else. That's why black churches be rocking like that. Music is profound. It transcends. It's what kept us. Go back during slavery. And you will see that the slaves used music to communicate. They used, they braided their hairs to make maps. But they used music to communicate. Music always played a profound part of us over here in the healing process, in the, in the, in the demonstration of frustration process, uh, pro, you know, uh, pro progress, in the, in, in, in the fashion of us being together, standing together, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. You know, our music is what kept us together, was the glue. The music is one thing that we had where we can unleash everything that uh, we felt that was inflicting us, our music. So when the devil seen that, he hit us with everything he could, and he couldn't break the spirit of us as a people. So he he seen what 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 the hell keep them together? Why I can't? And he noticed it was the music. It was the music. When we were walking and marching in Selma, and we was we was we was going through civil rights, we was keep our eyes on the prize, oh Lord. We were singing music, the seduction of it. People like Whitney Houston, Teddy Pendergraft, Johnny Gill, they have it. Mariah Carey, them voices. So it's music. So when Easy e them came out and they bought what was known as gangster rap, think about it. We went from hip hop. Hip hop was created. Hip hop actually comes from Curtis Blow. I say a hip 
hop, a hippie tippy hippie did. That's where that come from, the term hip hop. Curtis Blow. I say a hip hop, a hippie tippy hippie did hip hop, but you don't stop. Rock. Remember that? That's where hip hop come from. But when Easy Eden came out, they had to classify them as something else, huh? They weren't hip hop. They weren't like Big Daddy Kane, LL Cool J, Run DMC, and all the rest of them, Dougie Fresh and all them. No, they had to get him a new name, and what did they give him? They gave him Gangster Rap. What is Gangster Rap? What is that? Rap stand for rhythm and poetry. That's what rap stand for, rhythm and poetry. What's Gangster Rap? Think about it. When that, when that came out, that's when you see, and I'm not saying Easy e is to blame. I'm saying it was people that put that out there because the mass seduction. Look at what it did. Look at what it did. When Easy e them came out, they bought with them AK-47 drive-by shootings. That's when we really started this. Remember, we used to be about our women. When we was hip-hop, we didn't disrespect women. We had women like Roxanne, Roxanne Shante, the real Roxanne, Sparky D. You know, we had we had we had Miss Melody, Salt and Pepper. We had a few females out there, MC, uh, MC Trouble, rest in peace. We had a we had a few females out there. MC Light. But they wasn't being disrespected and they had battles. That's what they would call They had rap battles, but they wasn't called B-I-T-C-H's. UTFO and the real Roxanne, Roxanne Chante had a battle. They didn't call up B-I-T-C-H's and talk about her like a dog. They didn't do that. They kept it artful. But when Eazy e came out, women became B-I-T-C-H's. Remember that she swallowed it. We start, we start, we start looking at women as 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 dogs, and we was drinking what he was drinking, old English eight ball. Cause see out here in Vegas, we was drinking slip mouth liquor, Coke forty five. Let's keep it real. Slip mouth liquor, the bull, and Coke forty five is what we was drinking out here in Las Vegas. Then all of a sudden, everybody drinking eight ball. Where the name come from? It didn't come from Vegas. Where the name eight ball come from? Where y'all heard that from? Easy. Yeah. Police on my draws. I had to pause. 40 ounce in my lap and it's freezing my balls. Y'all remember that? Let the boys go past, and I said to myself, they could kiss my ass. See a bit, ah, and I say what? Take a look at the face, and a bit is to the curve. See? Remember that? Easy E. Uh, when, when, the, when the woman was talking to him. Ruthless. My style as a juvenile. Ran with a gang. Slang in the meanwhile. Banking. I said, y'all yeah, remember that? That's what we was listening to. That's what we were seduced by. Then we started doing like they was doing in colors. They was already doing it in L.A., but we started doing like they were doing in colors. We started driving by, pow, spraying up stuff. The music. So in 1988, that's when it went all bad. When L died, I remember getting out of Elko, you know, in 88. Uh, around 88, I got out of Elko, early 88. You know, and I remember, you know, I, you know, not to say no name, but I remember we going, you know, going to the, you know, over there to West Coast and shooting up West Coast, listening to Easy Does It. You know, and, 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 and drinking Old English. I know how it made me feel and that music with it. It made me evil. It made me believe in what I was hearing. The music. And then when the Sherm came out and Scarface came out, because it seemed like Scarface came out, right? And he came out with another form of rap, some mind of a lunatic. And when you smoking PCP listening to that, 
I sit alone in my four corner room staring at candles, dreaming of the people I dismantled. I close my eyes and in a circle appears the images of some of the bitches that I murdered. When you smoking Sherm and listening to that, and come on, man. Come on, man. It has an effect on your mind. And you wonder why we was out there acting like that, man. That played a major part in what we doing. 88 and 89, that's when things started changing for the bad. It, 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 the music. The music. Back in the days, you know, it was more or less about the beat. Remember? Remember Joe Cooley? He couldn't rap worth it. But Everlasting Bass, it was about the beat. MC Shy D, everything I say, you know, it's rough. Um, MC Shy D, and I gotta be tough. Body up, but see, it was about the, it was about the, it was about the beat. Eric B and Rakim, it was, a, Rakim can flow, but them beats was out of line. You know, it was about them beats. It was about the beat. And then you had Public Enemy fight the power. They was on some black social conscious stuff. You know, that's what we was on. I got a letter from the government the other day. I opened and read it. It said they were suckers. They wanted me to join the army or whatever. Picture me giving a damn. I said never. See, we was listening to that. But when that Easy e came out and all that stuff that came out after Easy e Messing with Dang, the Ice Cube broke away once upon a time in the project, yo. All that stuff started coming out, man. We started listening to that. We started consuming PCP, St. Otis, Cisco, Mad Dog, all of those stuff. We drinking all of those stuff, man. And eating hot wings. We was out of our minds, man. We was whacked out of our minds, man. And then you got the crack. We trying to make money and doing all this stuff. So that's why everything was wiped out. I, in 1988, everything went south from Vegas. It went horrible. It went horrible. When, when, and everybody got seduced by that music. You can't say you wasn't. Because if you was rocking Raiders jackets, Nikes, gangster boots, or whatever, spot belts. You were seduced. The cross cords, the LA gears, the Adia doors, the British Knights. If you was rock, if you was rocking out, you were seduced by the culture. The big Ben jackets, the dig the dicky jackets. We was all seduced by that. Dressing like we was in prison when we was 15 years old. See? What happened to the Louis Vuitton sweatsuits and the fake and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the hollow ass Turkishes we used to wear with the Cadillac emblems on? Remember that way we used to dance? Then we used to walk with our hands swinging this way like we was LL Cool J. Remember that with the fat with the fat tongue on the shell toes with the fat laces? Remember we used to do that and we used to be beatboxing. <laughs> we used to be doing all that. Remember that? We went from doing all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm wearing our locs, walking with a limp, with a gat in our pocket, ready to shoot something. We went from battle. Our battle used to be going in the corner, beatboxing. <laughs> we used to battle like that or rap, and you know what I'm saying? We went from battling like that to putting our pistols on each other, bloom, bloom, knocking each other down. We went to that type of battle. And it came along with the music, and the music had a lot to do with it. People don't, people don't focus on that. The music was corrupted. The music is what kept us together. And once the music got corrupted, we was broken to people. Come on, man. Think about it. Think about it. And now you got this drill music. Think about it. You got this drill music over there in, in, in Chicago that then, 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 then wiped out a whole generation of children over there. And now they got some music now called demon music. I don't even know what that is. But I know since it came out, a lot of rappers have been dying. I don't know what demon music is. I know what drill music is. And that's horrible. But demon music? Come on, man.
Think about that, man. And you know, people that study religion, you know, and they know anything about the devil, you know, you know, the devil was over music, you know. The devil made beautiful music in heaven before he was cast out. You know, so you need to keep that in mind. You know, out here, man, we, I mean, the music affected a lot of us, you know, in a, in a negative way, man. It did. A lot of us fell victim to what we was listening to. And that's sad. because, And a lot of people are denied, but they did. We was really caught up in what we was listening to. We was caught up into that. We even started saying, I'm going to smoke you. Because Easy e was saying. You know? We start, we start, we start, we start, you know, using fully automatics because Easy e did was because we because they was doing it. Then Ice T came back with Hustler. And that's what we was out here doing, Hustler. Everybody trying to get that fast buck. So we was listening to what we was out here living. That's what happened to us. In 1988, that's when everything went bad. So to answer your question, I hope I gave you a thesis on it just now. And you know, it hit Las Vegas hard. Las Vegas is 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 is, is you know, I weep for my I weep for my state. I weep for I weep for Vegas, man. I really do. Because unfortunately for us, you know, we're not big like California and Detroit and St. Louis and these other places that can lose, you know, uh, and it's unfortunate that we lose, period, but the fact that they can lose, you know, uh, so many and still, you know, have a presence, we we really wiped ourselves out out here, man. We down to the great-grandchildren. They the ones roaming around here listening to fables of their fathers and grandfathers. We down to the great-grandchildren, man. And that's sad, bruh. But it's the music. And it's continuing to, to destroy us. Now you got record labels now that's 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 sending out memos and 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 and, and, and going against uh hip hop. They they not they not they not signing no more artists to major labels. They on that now. That's our baddest thing got. <laughs> you know? We need to take back our music and make it what it was anyway because we let other people from outside our communities corrupt our music for profit. For profit. Use our talents for darkness. When, 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 when you know, they used to mock our music. When the fat boys and all them was out, they used to mock us, make fun of us when we made our music. But then they turn around and make billions off of it and at the same time use it to destroy our communities. They used to make fun of us when we used to beatbox. They used to make fun of us when we used to, you know, play our music. They used to mock our music. They didn't take it serious. Then they turned around and made so much money off of it. Sent so many little young boys to the cemetery and to the, to the penitentiary listening to that music, being influenced by that music. It's sad. I weep for my state, man. I really do. I weep for my state. I really do. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. We got to grow up as a as a community. We have to grow up. And we have to look in the mirror. We have to want to. Quit, let's quit coming together for some feel good, you know, uh, 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 false senses of security. Knowing that we're only coming together to create a bunch of noise and havoc. We don't come together to sit down and actually talk to each other and, and ask ourselves, where do we go from here? Y'all come together just for symbolic reasons. There's no spirituality in the, the gatherings. We don't come together to come up with a solution to fix a, a, a problem that's continued to persist. We, 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 we want to put it in the lap of other people, then complain how they do the job. But we don't want to do it, but we want to complain how they do it. Meaning that we won't the police in our communities because we scared of each other. So y'all say. So when the police come in our communities to do their job and then somebody get killed, now you want them out the community because they didn't kill little Bobo because Bobo did whatever. See? We want it both ways. You know? 
and, 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 and it can be stopped simple as this. We, we can grow up, sit our behinds down, and start acting our ages. We can accept responsibilities for what we did. We can accept our failures as a people and, and, and work to correct them. But let's stop denying that they exist. They're there for everybody to see. When we won't respect, if we won't respect from other races, then we got to start respecting ourselves and show other other and show other races that we are to be respected. But when we continue to blow each other away like we not nothing, all that stuff that we complain and gripe about is gonna fall on deaf ears. That's why it's so easy to do away with what they're doing away with. CRT and all that stuff. That's why it's so easy because look at how we act toward one another. Who go respect a bunch of people that don't even respect themselves? We don't. You know, you rather be in the streets with your homeboys than be at home with your kid. That's sad. You can be on the internet arguing with another man with gray nose heads. But you don't want to be at home with your kid trying to keep him out the streets. Then you get that knock on the door and then people come to your door and they talking very gentle and lightly to you telling you that they got somebody, a uh, body down here that they need you to come identify. Now your whole world is gone. Huh? Your whole soul is crushed. And this is something that's replaying itself over and 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 over. And we as a people, as black people, as melanated people, we have to understand that this is an internal problem that we have to face. Let's quit lying and put.